In today's video, we are going to be talking about Xano, which is a very, very interesting no-code tool that a lot of you have been asking me to discuss, to make tutorials on. And this video is going to be divided into two parts. In the first part, we're going to have an overview of Xano. We're going to talk about what it is, what it does, and how it can help you in your no-code development. And in the second part, we are going to put Xano to use and build a very, very simple app with another tool that I'm sure most of you know very, very well by now. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps that I'm going to build in today's video are going to be available on my Patreon page, and you're going to see a link to it in the description below. So here we are at Xano.com. And this is a tool that a lot of you have been asking me to do tutorials on for a while now. And I finally was able to get to it. And I got to say, I'm impressed. It's a very, very interesting tool, but it's unlike most of the tools that you guys are familiar with. So let's start from the top. We are at their main page, and this is kind of what they say. Uh, the no-code backend to power and scale any app make any app scalable secure and compliant with Zano. you can uh, watch a video but it's better to just scroll down and take a look what it does so it's, it tells you that you can launch a complete backend in minutes Zano comes with everything you need to quickly launch a backend without worrying about scale okay so this is kind of the main things that uh, it gives you okay so we have a no code api creator we have a flexible database and we have a scalable server so you can kind of read about it you can integrate and connect with everything using their api uh, you can create apis with no code and we're going to talk about that in just a second and then they have a database uh, store data with no code limits search filter aggregate and then they have a server as well okay so it's a very very interesting product and before I kind of tell you, you know, what it does, let's go ahead and log in. They have a very, very generous free plan. You can just click on get started for free. And once you're logged in, you're going to be at a, a page that looks something like this. So I have a free instance. I'm using the, the basic free account here. And if I click on this, it's going to open up and I'm going to be in a, a kind of a dashboard for this instance. I guess a really simple uh way to think about it this is kind of like a i have a wordpress site if you're familiar with that and by clicking on an instance i basically am on a dashboard for like a website or something right i have different things that i can do but it's kind of like my own server if you think about it that way and so we have you know different things happening here uh this is my account i have my workspace here i have dashboard database api tasks etc etc now the best way to think about Xano is it's it's a backend, okay? Uh, there's no UIs, there's no ways of you know building elements on the screen. There's none of that. It's all a backend, right? Because if you think about what an app does, right? We have an app here. We kind of have a basic architecture, an app architecture. We have a user. Uh, user goes to a uh, UI screen, they interface with the UI, and then you have logic in DB. So Xano is mostly kind of this part here, right? It gives you this and it gives you this as well. It does not give you the UI, okay? Now, that is why it's very, very different than kind of pretty much all, at least, you know, most of the tools that we, we reviewed on this channel because all the other tools they are complete tools they give you a ui they give you a you know a logic uh, subsystem they give you a database uh, subsystem just like you know flutterflow bubble app guyver etc etc but zano they decided okay we're just gonna focus on the back end and you know i gotta tell you that after playing around with it that's actually not a bad strategy because uh it's a really really cool tool and so let's go ahead and let me explain to you kind of what we have here. And then we're going to go and try to build a simple app and we are going to connect it with Flutterflow. So we're going to use Flutterflow for the UI and we're going to connect to our backend here. Okay. So we're back on this dashboard. We have a database, right? We always start with a database, right? Yeah, we have APIs and all these things, but we got to store our data somewhere. Okay. So we have our database here. 
And that kind of tells you what is a database, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You guys can, can read this later, but I'm just going to dismiss it. Uh, because a database, you know, if you played around with like Firebase or something else like Superbase, you probably know what a database is, right? We have different tables here and you can create relationships as well. So that's really, really nice. Uh, we have APIs. And so you can, you know, create APIs, basically application programming interfaces to the databases. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that in just a second. Uh, we also have tasks. Okay. So these are background tasks, also known as cron jobs. There are ways to execute business logic automatically on a set interval. So if you need something happening in the background every day, every 30 minutes, uh, some kind of an interval, very, very important, right? That's a must with a lot of apps uh you have this okay so it's only available on paid packages that's fine then we have a library we have marketplace we have connect that you can connect to third-party services etc cetera, etc cetera. all right so now that we talked a little bit about what it does that it's only a backend let's put it to use and let's build a very very simple app a proof of concept if you will that we're going to connect uh into flutterflow and then we're going to run flutterflow and display some of the data that we're going to be storing here so the first thing that we want to do is we want to go to database and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a very, very simple table. I'm just going to click on add table and I can import from a CSV. I can also import from Airtable. So this is really nice. This is really, really nice. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, how about to do, right? To do list. We always start with that. That's a really good example. Uh, API group, uh, I'm just going to say default, that's fine. And we want to make sure this is checked because we wanted to add basic CRUD endpoints. So CRUD stands for create, read, update, delete. These are just these basic operations that you do on pretty much, you know, all tables, right? This is something you start with. Maybe later on you're going to be doing something else, but this is your ABCs, right? ABCs of database. So we're going to say add table. It's going to go ahead and create a new table. So it has, it created a new database model has been saved. And here we are at a database. Now this screen here looks very familiar to Superbase. Okay. So it's very similar to basically any, any app that gives you a way of a filtering database. Very, very powerful. And what we have here is we have these columns up on top and then we're going to have records as rows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of more columns. I'm going to say plus. And I'm going to do a text column. I'm just going to call it task or name. Okay. The, the task name and it's, um, you know, we can say required structure, nullable, et cetera. We're going to do public API just for testing. And I'm going to say save. And then I'm going to add another field or another column. Same thing, really. And I'm going to do a Boolean and we're going to say done. Okay. So uh, it's a Boolean default value is false. So, you know, when we create new records, if we don't specify the explicit value for done, uh, it's going to be false, which is exactly what we want. So if you look at this table here, right, this schema, when you're creating new records, these two things, well, these three things, everything except name are going to be done automatically. So which is awesome, which is kind of what you want. And let me go ahead and create a couple of records. So at least we have something. So I'm going to say we have a new record and I'm going to say name, uh, record the video record a YouTube video. I'm going to add a new record and I'm going to say clean my room and I'm going to add another record. Let's just do three and I'm going to say um, call my mom. Okay. Something very, very simple. And now we have three records, three rows and we have four columns here. Okay. And so there's lots of things that you can do. You can search. If you have a lot of records, you can filter, you can sort. You also have keyboard short, uh, shortcuts, you have indexes, you, you can create relationships. So we're just going to keep it very, very simple. And we can go back and now we have this new to-do that we created. Okay, so we have this to-do. And what's cool about it is that if we go into APIs and if we go into default, which is what we specified when we were creating that table for the endpoints, the CRUD endpoints, if we go in here, if we scroll down, right, well, actually we have, we can jump to an API endpoint. So I have this to do here. Okay. So I can click on that and it created API endpoints. And these are awesome, right? This is really, really nice because, um, you know, we don't have to do it ourselves, right? We, we create our database, we create the endpoints and we're kind of good to go. Okay. This is, um, a lot of tools 
they allow you to create a database, but you have to create the endpoints yourself, which is kind of annoying. This saves you so much time. And so it created five endpoints for us, right? We can delete the record. We can get a specific record using a to-do ID. We can get all records. We can add a record and we can edit records, okay? Which is all we need, right? This is CRUD, right? This is exactly what you need. Create, read, update, delete. This is all you need. Now, another thing that's really nice about it is you're given API documentation in the Swagger format. So if you click this, it's going to open up the Swagger interface. And if you're not familiar what Swagger is, it's kind of a standard for um, giving you APIs. For It's a standard for displaying and kind of formatting API calls. If, if you're using you know, any kind of like third-party API services like Microsoft Azure or any of the big ones, they always give you like a Swagger interface because um, it, it's a standard, right? You can test them, right? So if you, you can go to this to-do and you can say, well, I want to get all my to-dos and I can test things out right here on the website. I don't need Postman. I don't need, you know, any of the other tools. I can test it out and I can see if it's working. So if I scroll down to to-do, which is uh, what we are working uh, with here, which is kind of what we created, I can see, are we displaying those three records? Remember, we created three records. I can come in here and I can say, try out. Okay, and I can say, you know, I specified, I'm gonna hit execute and it executes this request and we're getting three records. So we have record the YouTube video, clean my room, call my mom, right? And they're all false and we have everything. So everything is working fine. We got success, you know, and, and right away I know that I can, I can not only can I um, import this swagger into another tool, like uh, there's a bunch of tools where you can import this directly, I can also uh, test it out, right? I can also do that. Now, maybe Flutterflow sometime down the road, they're going to have a tool that lets you import Swagger um, API calls, which is going to be awesome. They don't do that yet, but it's not a it's not a difficult thing to implement, okay? And so that's kind of what we have. And you can obviously test more things. You can delete the record by specifying ID. So you have your whole environment right here, which is amazing. This is why I like Swagger so much. And this is also unfortunate. And unfortunately, not all the tools give you this. So this is awesome. So I can play around. I can test it. I'm testing. Everything is good. Now, if I want, I can go back to Zano. I can go to the, uh, the database tab here. I can pick my database to do. I can create more records. I can go back to the Swagger testing tool and I can test. I can see if those records are showing up. Another thing that I can do is I can go to this APIs here and I can go to my uh, to do's that were automatically created and I can click on something and I can customize it. Right. So I can click on this and I can say, well, you know, it created a function for me and I can customize it. Right. It's, you know, it's uh, I'm specifying a to do ID. Right. I'm getting, you know, a specific to do. And it created these functions for me and everything like that. And maybe in a future video, I'll do a more in-depth tutorial. But the bottom line is that you have a lot of control of how you're getting this data, right? From the automatically generated CRUD stuff, right? So we have a function stack, we have a response, et cetera, et cetera. Now that we have seen that, you know, all our records are here, we are able to, you know, execute API calls and everything is working on the Xano side. Let's go into Flutterflow and let's create a very, very simple app that displays our to-dos and allows us to create a new to-do, something very, very simple. So here I am back in Flutterflow and I created a very, very simple app that has a input for a new to-do. You have a button that is going to execute an API to create it. And we have a list that's going to display these two tools. So let me show you how this app works, right? So if you go to API calls, we need to create our API calls. And we're going to keep it super, super simple. So we're going to create two API calls. We're going to have a create new API. And we're going to have a get all API. Okay, so let, let me go back to Zano here. And so what I need to do is I'm going to go to my to do's, uh, kind of the, the endpoints that I need to get the data that I need. And then I'm going to find this query, uh, get all to do records. I'm going to click on this copy endpoint. I'm going to go back to my app and I'm going to paste it here. Next, I'm going to go to response and test. And I want to make sure that it's actually working from Flutterflow. We've tested it in Swagger. Let's test it in Flutterflow. We're going to say test API call and we are getting our three uh, to do's here. Okay. 
Now, what we need to do here is we need to make sure that we can get a list of this because we need to have this list in Flutter Flow uh, in order to display it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to JSON Pass. I'm going to go to Recommend it. And depending on what I want to display, I want to I just display name here, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to say Selected. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. And now we have this list. I'm going to delete this one, this old one, and I'm just going to say Tasks. Okay, so this is a list of tasks. I'm going to hit save. Okay, so we have this. Next thing we need to do is we need an, another API call for creating new uh, new records. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Zano here and I'm going to go to this one, add to the record. Okay, this post add to the record. I'm going to copy this endpoint. I'm going to go back to Flutterflow, go to this method here and I'm going to paste it here. Okay, I'm going to call it create new. And I'm going to go to response and test. Okay, so the way this works is that it's going to have a body and we just need to send a JSON request with the values that we need. So if we go back to Swagger here and let's say I want to create a new one, add to the record, this is, it, it gives us example values, right? This is why Swagger is so powerful. So we can just copy this, go back to our app. We can paste this. And this here, we need a variable, right? So we need a variable um, that's going to display the actual name of the to-do. Um, the, the Boolean, the done is always going to be false, so that doesn't matter. But we need the variable called task. So I have here a variable co called task. Our uh, type is string. It's not a list. And once it's defined, once we go into body, we can just drag and drop this new variable into right here. Okay, and I'm saying done false. Okay, and so now we can actually test it. If we go into response and test, we can specify this new variable. And I'm going to say new task from Flutterflow, from FF. We're going to test our API call. And it created 200 success. And now we have ID of four. So this is the fourth task. It's here. And we don't need the JSON path. We don't care about, you know, doing anything. We just want to send this and that's it and be done with it, right? It's just a, a one, one way direction. We're just creating. We're not, we don't care about the results. I mean, we care about this but we don't care about the data in this uh, request. And so at this point, we have four tasks. So just so that you know when we're going to be um, displaying our data. So this part is done. Our API definition is done. We can just hit save. So we have two methods, get all and create new. Let's go back into our UI and let's uh, fix this up real quick. So we have this input here. This is an input field. We have this button. We're going to open this button. And this button here is a backend call, create new, and we are going to be specifying a variable. The variables from this input task, which is a um, widget state input task, right? We just have one variable. And so whatever the user enters becomes the field in the API. Flutterflow automatically generates a condition for us so that if it's on success, uh, you know, we, we can do something. So what we're doing is we're just refreshing this task list, this uh, list view here. And when it's false, we're not doing anything. In a real production app, you always want to have a message that says, okay, this didn't work out, um, you know, that there was an error, but we're just going to keep it simple. Next, we have a list view. So we have a task list, which is a list view. We have a row and text. And this is very, very important for you guys to understand. You can't just get this data, okay? This data is a list. You need to do something else. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to come in here, this backend query, and you need to execute the query. We're doing get all, okay? We're just doing get all here. Now there's another important step that you have to do. Once you're getting this list, you need to make sure you break it apart because you're getting a list, you're getting an array. So that is why we need to come back here and we need to generate children from a variable. Now here, what you need to do is you need to specify that list that we set it up before. And you do that by going into get all response. You're going to specify JSON body. You're going to specify JSON path and you're going to specify the path name task. And that's going to give you a list of just the names of those tasks, which is kind of what we need. You're going to say confirm. And then you're going to give each of those items, each of those tasks, a variable named task. And then when you come in here, you can just set from variable, you can come in here and you're not going to be using get all response. You're going to be using task item, right? You're going to say task item. That's it. You don't need to format it, nothing. And that's going to break that uh, array up into different items and that's going to display it. So every row is going to, is going to receive a, an individual item. Okay. Very, very important. You have to kind of do that two-step process.
and that is pretty much it so let's go and run this app and let's see if it does what we wanted to do we're going to create a test environment here all right so here's our app and as you can see immediately we see our four tasks that we created so if we go back here to our Xano here and we go to our database and we go to to do's we have these four tasks here now back inside the app we can try creating a new task we can say new task from Flutterflow UI we're going to click this and it created a new task here if we go back to our Xano here we can refresh it and we have a new task here okay we can do the same thing here a new task from Xano UI okay we can do that it's saved come back here reload this app real quick and that's going to pull the data and there you have it that's the task we just created and obviously you can implement all kinds of functionality you have the crud stuff right you have the basic operations such as create edit delete all of that so it's just a question of creating the corresponding ui uh, endpoints those ui requests in flutterflow that are mapped to your uh, generated requests in Xano. Now, obviously, it would have been really nice for uh, the ability to import a Swagger file in Flutterflow. That way, you don't need to do it manually. And maybe in the near future, we are going to see this functionality. And so that was a quick proof of concept app that we built where we are using Flutter as the UI and we are doing all the backend stuff, all the heavy lifting uh using Xano and it goes without saying that this is merely scratching the top of the surface because there's so many things that you can do you have relationships you can you know create indexes you can have a lot of data uh, you can search filter uh you can also go, you know do your tasks that we talked about plus you can also go into library and you can create functions right functions are reusable business logic so not only do you have your database but you also have the logic stuff here so you can create new functions you can just go to add functions uh, you can create one here uh, you have various add-ons you have files you have a marketplace you can connect it to third-party apps and services you have you know so many things that you can do and so some final thoughts that I want to share with you after kind of playing around with it um, this tool is one of a kind I honestly don't remember seeing a tool exactly like this before because all the other tools they aim to do everything right they're kind of like the swiss army knife of no code tools they have a ui they have this they have that and that's awesome right that that gives you a one tool you can go out and you can build your app but what i really like about this tool and i actually liked it immediately is that they're focusing on a specific area they're focusing on a specific area so you, even if you go to their home page you see a bunch of tweets here and they are you know some people are saying you know they see them becoming bigger than bubble give it about two years and you'll see what i mean and so maybe this is the future right it's about specialization where you have a certain tool that does a certain thing and you're kind of you know mixing matching you know building all these lego pieces together that could be a possibility i really really like that aspect i really really like that they uh tell you what they do and they do not under deliver right they may over deliver but they definitely do not leave you disappointed you know once you know as soon as i figured out that this is a backend tool i would you know i was very very happy with their offering i was like okay so i can build a database it's scalable i have my own instance here i can uh, define the fields i can import using csv i can import using Airtable. so they give you a lot of things for their offering okay uh one thing that i did not like i'm not a big fan of this ui i feel it's kind of dated it's kind of this UI from like, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago or something like that. It's very, very dated. Um, you know, you see a lot of no code tools with beautiful UIs. I think one tool that I reviewed called Teta, uh, it's a Flutterflow based builder, Flutter based builder, uh, has a beautiful UI. So I think they can definitely freshen up the UI, make it a little bit more appealing, uh, a little bit more interesting. But at the end of the day, maybe it's all about function over form. And so regardless of whether you like this UI, this tool does deliver a lot of things. It does a ton of things. And so if you guys are interested in uh, doing some kind of backend stuff and you just want to pull that data up, you know, from some other application, whether it's Flutterflow, Bubble or, you know, something else, maybe there's a new tool that's going to come out tomorrow that just allows you to pull this data, maybe Webflow or something like that. 
uh, that this could be a very, very nice solution. I'm actually going to be spending more time with it over the following days and weeks. And so I plan on doing a more comprehensive video, a more comprehensive tutorial where we're going to be building a more complex app. And so if that is something you guys want to see. Definitely like this video and leave a comment below letting me know so that I am more motivated to create such an app because that is something you guys want to see. Definitely let me know for sure. Now, if you guys are serious about no code, you're serious about taking it a couple of notches above where it is today. Uh, maybe you want to build that one app that you've been dreaming of building for a year or a couple of years now, or maybe you want to you know, get a job somewhere, or maybe you want to see how far you can go. Maybe you want to, you're curious about, you're interested in seeing, you know, what does it take to build a simple or a complex app? Then you definitely, you definitely, definitely owe it to yourself to check out my Patreon page because on my Patreon page, you're going to get a ton of content. Not only will you get access to all the apps that I've built in Flutterflow, as well as some of the other no code app builders, but you're also going to get extra content such as Q and A's, live streams, behind the scenes content, and also my amazing masterclass series where I do deep dives on specific areas that a lot of people are having trouble with. We actually had a voting just recently where I asked people, you know, what, what you guys want me to do a new uh, masterclass on what you guys are having trouble with and we actually voted and as a result we had a new idea we had a new topic for an upcoming masterclass episode which is a deep dive on a specific area on a specific topic that a lot of people are having trouble with plus when you join my patreon you're going to be supporting my channel and supporting my work. And, and for that, I'm very, very grateful. And last but not least, we have an amazing community there. And so if you have not yet joined, I definitely urge you to check it out and perhaps join our amazing community. You're going to see a link to our Patreon community in the description as well as in the first pinned comment. And so that will do it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and you want to see more videos about Xano, more videos about no code tools, more videos about backend stuff, let me know in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you guys in a future 